Many students have heard about scales before. Many students have heard about arpeggios, but do you really know how to practice them effectively? Well, today, guess what? That's what we're gonna talk about, how to practice all your scales, fit it in your routine so you get the most out of them. So let's get on to our first topic. Okay, the first thing you wanna do with scales is you wanna first start by learning your scales in order of the circle of fifths. Uh, so you, first of all, you wanna learn your scales to get the most out of this. And what I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually explain it here on the piano, I can explain it a little bit better. You can read this slide there. But you wanna start out with the key with zero sharp, zero flats, which is C major, right? And then the next scale you wanna learn is five notes up, one, two, three, four, five, which is G. G has one sharp. Then the next scale you want to learn is five up from there. That's why they call it the circle of fifths. And the goal is, is that you want to work your way up from zero sharp, zero flats to all sharps, which happens to be seven with C sharp, like that. Um, so you want to work your way up from zero to all sharps uh, in order. So you're not going from a really easy key to a super difficult key you know, right off the bat, it makes it more manageable. The bee's flying around again. <laughs> All right, so uh, let's take a look here. Then coming back to our slide here, you want to uh, start with one octave and you want to do that probably for quite a few months or a few weeks at least. And then you wanna work your way up to two octaves and then four. So let me show you on the piano. First, you're just gonna go up. You might even wanna learn them hand separate first but try to go up one octave, hands together. I thought I saw a B over there. <laughs> one octave, hands together, and then you wanna go up two octaves, hands together. And there you go, that's the way you wanna do it. Uh, and then you wanna do it four octaves, hands together. I don't know if I did four, hold on. There you go, four octaves, uh, C major, and then you wanna go through and learn G and all the other ones uh, up to four octaves. But start out with one octave and then work your way up. Okay, the second tip I have for you is once you have your scales learned, you wanna practice them chromatically up from one another. So basically what that means for you is that once you you know, have them all memorized basically, you know the layout of the scale and the fingering, you wanna practice them like this. You wanna start with C major. Oops, let me do two octaves. Then what you wanna do is the next scale you play is gonna be a half step above that. So it's gonna be C sharp. And then the next scale you're gonna play is a half step above that, that's D. Next scale you're gonna play up is one up, that happens to be E flat. next one up happens to be E. All right, this is going to be the last one I'll play. I think you get the idea. And uh, one quick tip is when you're playing scales, you want to have your fingers slightly pointed in the direction you're going. So when I'm ascending, they're pointing up there. When I'm descending, they are pointing down. That gives you a little bit more surface area to work with when you are playing. All right, let's get on with the next main tip. Okay, the next stage of the scales is after you play the scales four octaves. You wanna practice a one octave in quarter notes, two octaves in eighths, three in triplets, and four octaves in sixteenths. So let me show you. So we're gonna start with C major. And we're gonna play one octave in quarter notes. So just one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Three, four, one, two, three, four. And then you want to do two octaves and eighth notes. So you can go one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and uh, three. It doesn't look like there's enough beats, but you just have to uh, play them um, in eighth notes. Then you want to practice three octaves in triplets by going one, 
one triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet. It's really hard to do it and say it at the same time, but one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Just like that in triplets. Bump, 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 bump. One, two, three, one, two, three, one. Whoops. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Just like that. Bum, 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 Dun, 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 Triplet. All the way up three octaves. And then all the way back down. Then you want to play it four octaves in 16th notes. One E and a two E and a, again, it's going to be hard to say it and do it at the same time. Just like that. And then you want to go up, obviously chromatically, do the same thing, play the next one, one octave in quarters, and then the next one, two octaves in eighths, three octaves in triplets, and then you go up chromatically, just like we talked about before. All right, let's get on to the next topic. Okay, a special tip, this one's really important actually, is you want to always remember to write down the scales you had trouble with during your routine and then the next time when you do your scales you want to spend extra time or even start with those scales and really work out the kinks and the bugs uh, so let's get on to the next tip that was just a little short one for you okay arpeggios this one uh, I'm going to shorten this little segment only because it's pretty much the same way we practice our scales you want to start by learning your arpeggios one octave uh, and then you want to uh, work up to four octaves you want to start with a white key major chords and a minor or yeah white key major and minor triads uh, and then work up to chords with flats let me show you what i mean by that because that part's a little different so instead of just going in the order i mean you could still go in the order uh, the circle of fifths so you could do like c major then go five notes to G major. I mean, that's fine. That works out fine. You can do it the exact same way you do the scales. But what I recommend you do is do the, the white key chords first because they are the easiest. That's C major, F major, G major. They're the easiest arpeggios to learn first. Or you can go in the order of um, your circle of fifths. But... Um, you want to um, and then work your way up to the more complex ones with flats. We're not going to get into the exact fingering for all these in this lesson, uh, but you do want to pay attention to the fingering as well. Okay, now I'm going to sum up the entire process for you in one single slide. Let's take a look. Okay, time to sum up the entire practice routine. Uh, first, you want to practice all major scales four octaves. Move up the next scale by chromatic motion up to the next scale. So remember, that's like doing C major first, then C sharp major, then D, then D sharp major, then E major. So you're going up uh, chromatically each time like we talked about. Then you want to go through and you want to do the minor scales, the exact same process. Uh, I would learn the major scales first, learn them, and then do this process with it, and then learn the minor scales and uh, do this practice routine. Then you want to practice a one octave quarters, like you talked about, two octave eighths, three octaves in triplets, four octaves in in sixteenth notes, just like that, but only in four octaves. And then uh, let's take a look here. We have. Um, yeah, all right, I guess that's all I have to say about it. And then four octave sixteenths. And you wanted to do, obviously, do this every day and write down any mistakes you have. And arpeggios work the exact same way. Consistency is key in success with pretty much anything with music. So if you want to get better, play your arpeggios and chords or pretty much anything on the piano. What do you want to do? You want to practice it more often. And you want to practice it every single day. I have a question for you. Do you have any questions about what we talked about today? Do you have a certain practice routine you use for learning your scales and arpeggios? Uh, what tips do you have for all of us learning your tips and arpeggios? So let us know in the comments. I would love to hear from you, whether you're out here live with us tonight or you're watching the recording, I'll leave it in the comments. So uh, I'll give you a minute to answer those questions, if possible, if you have any.
Okay, our uh, live stream attendee Rich asks, not Rich, I'm so used to saying Rich, Chris has how to play arpeggios faster so I can play the third movement. I believe you're talking about uh, Moonlight Sonata, if I remember correctly from our previous stream. All right, let's take a look here. I'll give you some tips on how to play your arpeggios and your scales faster. Uh, what I really recommend you do is tip number one, get a metronome. You can find them online. You can just type in online metronome. You probably have one. Um, if you have a iPhone, you can obviously get an app for that or an Android. Excuse me, all pro kinds of problems today. Uh, but you can obviously uh, get some kind of app that you can use for a metronome. And then what you want to do is you want to slowly practice your scale along with the metronome. Uh, you know, obviously for each click, you're going to be pressing a note. Click, do, 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 click, do, 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 because I don't have a metronome right in front of me. Click, do, 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 click, do, do, do. Just like that. And you're just, your only goal is to play along with the beat. Maybe start at a really slow tempo, like uh, 80 beats per minute, or yeah, 80 beats per minute, or maybe 60 beats per minute. And then start gradually um, increasing the tempo. So once you feel like you can do it at 80 really easily, then you want to bump it up to 90. So you, then if you can do, practice it a few times, get it at 90 and then bump it up to 100. See if you can do it at 100. And then you might have to practice it a few days at 100 before you get it. And then you bump it up to 110. And then you bump it up to 120. So you use the metronome to play along, obviously, evenly with the tempo it gives you. But then over time, you want to slowly, gradually increase your tempo again and again and again. You can even use this with the passages in the piece that you're talking about where you learn, you basically put on the metronome and you just play one note per click or you know one quarter note um, per click and you just try to play along the best you can. And then once you can do it at that slower speed, then bump the metronome up 10 points. See if you can do it at that speed. So you can even apply this to the real music you play along with you know your scales and your arpeggios. Okay, Antonio asks, can you do C major going up the octave slowly so I can see how you do it? Yeah, absolutely. So let me show you how C major works with both hands. So I'm going to go very slow. And just careful that there are finger crosses going on here. That's how you do it. Now, uh, in terms of teaching the whole finger crossings and everything, that will be a lesson all in and of itself. I'll try to remember to link you to, uh, I don't have one in the description yet, but I'll try to link you to a playlist in the description to help you learn your scales, where we'll specifically talk about C major. In fact, if you type in C major scale lessons on the web, you'll find a lesson I did a couple of years ago uh, just on the C major scale. Richard asks, I didn't start learning arpeggios yet. I did major and minor scales. Is it a good idea to learn and play chords and scales and cadences before diving into arpeggios? I would learn your chords first before doing your arpeggios because all an arpeggio is is playing a chord, just note separately. So if I know the C major chord, I can play that arpeggio a lot easier because I know what three notes make up that chord. Same thing with like B flat major. I know that's made up of B flat and D and F. All right, let's check out the next one. Okay, Real Winds of Fan asks, uh, also can't, or says, can't, also can't do octaves yet. My main, uh, brain rebels. And then on the next line, it says tips. So yeah, I can give you uh, some tips doing it uh, two octave. Let's take a look here. So if you're doing an arpeggio one octave, it's pretty easy. But what I would do is when you're doing a two octaves, I would change your fingering. I would do one, two, three, rather than one, three, five. And that's because to hit the next octave, you're gonna have to pivot between this G and the C. It's kind of like when you play the scale 
and you have to do a little pivot on that E right there. It's just a little bit more spread out. So I'd use that fingering, one, two, three, one, two, three, five. Do it hands separate first when you're first doing it two octaves. But what I would do is you would go up to the first three notes, stop, and then just get the main, the main thing a lot of students struggle with is this cross right here. Getting that right. So really work just getting up to there because hitting the rest of the notes is actually pretty easy. So just see if you can play the first four notes of the arpeggio, which is C, E, G, C. See if you can hit that reliably. When you first do it, you're going to miss fire a lot. So it takes some time to be able to get that accuracy going on. Same thing with the left hand. It's a little bit easier going up with the left hand because you really have enough hand span to do it anyway. You don't have to cross quite yet. You do have to cross at the top of the chord. So maybe with the left hand, I would get it up to that E there, which is the middle note of the chord. And see if you can get that part. So you want to practice up to the difficult part of doing a two octaves. See if you can get that um, pivot down. And then the rest of it becomes quite a bit easier. You want to do it hand separate. You want to do it very, very slow. And then once you get it, you want to do it hands together. And you want to do it, honestly, super slow. If you're messing up, you're, you're going too fast. And you cannot go too fast. In my opinion, as you can see, I misfired a note there. I was going too fast. All right, let's get on to the next question here. There's one... Uh, there's one playlist I want you to take a look at in particular for today, and that is how to improve your ability to play with both hands together. I'm going to put some links that pop up for you to click on to get there, uh, as well as some links in the description. And that's just a great way to continue learning after today's lesson, uh, get some more skills. Since we were talking a lot about playing two-handed today uh, with the arpeggios and scales, I figured, you know, why not direct you, direct you to the two-handed piano playlist. So please check that out. It will really help you learn a lot more about this kind of stuff. So thanks everybody so much. You know who it is, Tim from Lessons on the Web. Have a great day and I'll see you in the next lesson. Thank you so much.